Angel One Limited Q3 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Hitul Kutka from Angel One Limited. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Kutka. Thank you. Uh, good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today to discuss Angel One's Q3 FY24 financial and business performance. The recording of today's earnings call and transcript will be uploaded on our website under the Investor Relations section. The financial results, investor presentation, and press release are also available on the website. For today's call, Angel One is represented by Dinesh Thakur, CMD, Vinita Agarwal, CFO. Uh, we also have the senior leadership team of Angel One along with SGA, our IR consultants. The leadership team will give us a brief overview of the operational and the financial performance of the quarter gone by, followed by a Q&A session. Please note that there may be certain forward-looking statements during the call, which must be viewed in aggregate with the risk that the company faces. With this brief introduction, I now invite Mr. Dinesh Thakkar for his opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Ritul, and good morning, and wish you all a very successful uh, 2024. Let me begin by giving you all a perspective of how we think about growth, as we strongly believe in the tremendous opportunity at our disposal. Over the last 27 plus years, our team has dedicated their efforts to offer clients the most suitable product in a seamless and efficient manner by harnessing power of data and technology. Over time, our organization has also ensured that it constantly evolves with the needs of its client and strives to stay relevant. That has been the core proposition of Angel One. Our goal has been to not just provide services, but also to cultivate a culture of investment. The digital assets we have developed are continuously evolving, enriched with innovative features to ensure an unparalleled investing experience. It is through such exceptional experience that clients choose to remain engaged with a platform, platform like ours over the, la, over the long, term, long term. We firmly believe in the importance of encouraging long-term investing habits, even if it means that some services are not immediately remunerative. Witnessing the change in today's retail investors, we have consciously and actively building their portfolio through SIP and direct equity investments is the incredible rewarding. It is heartening to see that long-term retail investments through both their, uh, these channels of direct investment, direct equity, and mutual fund stands about one-third in MSC free float market capitalization as of September 2023, even as many of them continue with their trading activity in different segments. This gradual shift towards long-term wealth creation is an exciting prospect defining the longevity of retail investors in India's capital markets. More individuals are recognizing the potential in these products, driven by the opportunity for sustained growth. It is gratifying to see our efforts contributing to this transformation in India's investing landscape. I am happy to share that Angel One continues its robust performance in quarter three FY24 as well. Angel One is amongst the few players to consistently expand its market share across various parameters while operating the business with very strong unit economies. This has been an especially historical quarter for us as we acquired more than a million clients in a month and 2.5 million clients in a quarter for the first time, accounting for nearly a quarter of industry's net client addition. This consistency in acquisition and expanding market share is premised on our superior tech and product development, topped by continuous enhancement, 
focused on priming our customers' ex experience. Let me take you through some of the company's key development after which Vinit will walk you through our financial performance. Broking and super app. Our clients' needs are central to us. During the quarter, we channelize our effort to make the super app more productive than them, thus double clicking on their needs. Since majority of the clients are young and fresh in their investing journey, it is imperative that we focus on process improvements. Right from easing their onboarding experience to offering them unique features, which simplifies their investment journey on the app. We integrated the Google mobile number picker in KYC journey, thus leveraging existing information from clients' Google linked accounts. This not only eases the data input step for our client, but also improves the accuracy in capturing their contact details. We launched a self-serve journey for our client with the aim to empower them to modify and update their KYC documents through the DIY route, thus reducing the dependency on manual assistance. Moreover, we encourage and help this young client to invest and build their lifetime wealth. We develop and release the stock discovery feature on our super app. This screeners host a collection of stocks like blue chips, sectoral themes, top gainers, etc. Thereby improving engagement and encouraging clients to build long-term portfolios. Simultaneously, addressing the need of our experienced client we introduce some advanced features like open interest analytics. We also optimize the web trading application with the rollout of Trade One, an all-in-one solution offering seamless trading experience, which allows our clients to quickly access multiple data points and thus take more focused decision. We also upgraded our charts with the introduction of some new free-to-use features for our clients. All this reflects on our commitment to continuously improve our product stack for both the new to market and experienced client. A culmination of this enhancement has had led to further improvement in our overall NPS. Another indicator highlighting superiority of our product is that Angel One has consistently ranked among top 10 finance apps on Play Store and App Store and is in the top five on iPad. We will continue our emphasis on improving experience for all our clients. Over the next few months, we plan to roll out enhancement on our charts like tick by tick data, which will provide clients with the most recent market activity. We also plan to develop, develop an all encompassing, encompassing equity portfolio view, aggregating that holding across different platforms into one unified holding report. MF and lending update. Our mutual fund offering on SuperAd has done exceptionally well since its launch. We created simple and user-friendly experience, results of which are clearly visible from the offtake of SIP through our platform. Focusing on easy to use journeys, we installed pipes, allowing our client to set up SIP mandate through UIP as well. We have also put efforts in optimizing the homepage thus making it easier for users to discover funds. This tweaks led to a significant improvement in conversion. Not just that, we have also made enhancements to the NXT platform, ensuring our channel partners have better visibility and capabilities. Our latest addition, the SIP Health Score, is also well received. Through this, we encourage our client to stay disciplined in their long-term investing journey. Features like this have culminated, uh, culminated into better client retention on the app, with around 90% of SIP clients continuing to engage. I am thrilled with the progress we have made in simplifying the journey of our client and supporting their investment habits. This has led to an incredible 17-fold year-on-year increase in SIP registration to over 9,55,000 during the quarter ended December 23. Our, sus our sustained position as India's second largest player on for incremental registered SIP is a testament to effective effectiveness of our super app strategy and the value it brings to our clients. 
Our aim is to partner with our clients at every important phase of their life. While providing equity and mutual fund is a pivotal part of this commitment, we are broadening the horizon, we are extending our uh, touch points by venturing into distributing uh, credit and fixed income product. During quarter three FI24, we dedicated efforts to crafting journey to distribute credit products. These are currently undergoing beta testing and we are gearing up to launch this offering in the current quarter. Initially, we will take a measured approach, stepping in cautiously to grasp the nuances of the ecosystem better before we scale up the servicing offering. Our strategy for expanding this service vertical relies on the wealth of data from our extensive client base. We will use this data to develop, develop an informed approach, ensuring that as we expand, our services align with precisely our clients' needs and expectation. This data-driven strategy is key to our gradual yet meaningful expansion. Data science. A testament to success of our data-driven strategy is the sustained growth of our existing business. We are harnessing a vast pool of data and leveraging it to create predictive models using complex algorithms. These models analyze client behavior thus empowering us to improve our engagement through personalized experience. Insight from the in-depth analysis play a pivotal role in our decision-making process. Data equips us to swiftly adapt to market shifts, ensuring our strategies remain agile and responsive. Incrementally, our data-driven machine learning algorithms allow us to strengthen our security protocols and protect sensitive information, thus effectively mitigating risk associated with fraud. Content strategy. During the quarter, we sharpened our focus on our content strategy, which forms a bedrock to engage and educate people about various financial products and establishes industry thought leadership. A key tenant here is to leverage social media, communities, and users to promote awareness. Going forward, we'll be rolling out multiple content initiatives aimed towards our target audience for brand recognition, engagement, recall, acquisition, and eventually activation. We will design well-targeted, authentic, linguistically and culturally accessible content that sparks conversation around wealth, investment, and finance amongst our future clients. Assisted business unit. Coming to our plans for growing the assisted business, we have very high aspiration here and strongly believe that we can and will disrupt the existing format of the business. Here I wish to update that the tenure uh, of NSE AP order served to us on 14th July 2023 has run its course and we have now commenced onboarding new authorized persons. We will transform the ecosystem and improvise better engagement journey on our NXT platform. Over the next couple of quarters, we will dedicate our efforts to building a strong foundation and will focus on assembling a specialized team for this vertical. We will have a targeted approach to expand our network of channel partners as we forge newer partnerships and penetrate further in underrepresented geographies. Year two, we will leverage our technology prowess as we build intelligence in our system premised on data. Group CISO onboarding. I am happy to introduce Anupita Daga as our Group Chief Information and Security Officer. She is a distinguished thought leader with over 25 years of expertise in spearheading security transformation, architecture, defining and driving security strategy, data privacy, risk qualification, and compliance with various global regulatory guidelines. She served as a CISO and data privacy officer at Yes Bank prior to joining Angel One. Anupita would will enhance information security, cyber security, data privacy framework at Angel One AMC. During the quarter, we progressed building the leadership team for our asset management business. I am happy to share the onboarding of Yemen Bhatia as the CEO of the business. Evan brings along with him a wealth of experience, 
cultivated over 17 year asset management industry with his last engagement being as head of ETF at Nippon Life India Asset Management. Through his numerous engagement at industry and regulatory committee, Heyman has played a pivotal role in fostering growth of passive fund industry in India. He will lead the strategic direction and growth initiatives for our asset management business. We also onboarded Mayul Dama as the chief investment officer for the business. Mayul comes with an equally strong repute with over 19 years of experience across financial services, of which more than 14 years were in asset management with companies like Nippon Life India Asset Management, Goldman Sachs Asset Management, and Benchmark AMC. Operational performance. I'm delighted to share that we delivered yet another historic performance during quarter three FY24. For the first time, we acquired over a million clients in a month, thus leading to 2.5 million gross acquisition during the quarter. With such a strong acquisition run rate, we now account for nearly a quarter of the industry's acquisition. With this, our period ending client base expanded to over 19 million, account accounting for about 14% of India's DMED accounts. Robust client activity led to 8.7% sequential growth in our average daily turnover to 5.8 million, again, our lifetime best. The ADT generated on our platform continue to be on an uptrend, growing by 21.4% quarter on quarter to nearly rupees 36 trillion as we continue to gain market share in overall retail equity turnover by 62 bits quarter on quarter to 26.8 percentage. At Angel One, our steadfast commitment has always been to foster profitable growth. While we remain dedicated to the core ethos we recognize that it is equally imperative to make strategic investment to strengthen the business and stay ahead of the curve. The investments made in quarter three FY24 demonstrates our proactive approach. Whether it is building a team for newer uh, businesses like asset management, expanding our client base or upgrading our tech and product to continuously prime client experience. We acknowledge that this strategic moves impact our margin in a short term. However, this investment will significantly contribute to our long-term profitable metrics. In nine months of FY24, we acquired over 5.9 million clients and reported nearly 937 million orders executed on our platform, both of which are higher than what we did in the entire of the last year. I hope these insights have given you a flavor of our tech-driven business model and our growth strategy to become a more integrated financial service play. Vinit will now take you through our financial performance, after which we'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Dinesh Bhai. Good morning and happy 2024 to everyone. As highlighted by Dinesh Bhai, quarter three FY24 has been a very strong operational quarter for us, as we achieved our historic best performance yet again. With average daily orders growing by 8.7% sequentially to 5.8 million, taking our aggregate order count higher by 3.5% sequentially to 350 million in quarter three FI24. Despite three lower number of trading days in the quarter, Angel One clocked its highest ever quarterly gross total revenue at rupees 10.6 billion, aided by a 17% sequential growth in interest income. Gross broking revenue declined marginally by 2.6% quarter on quarter to rupees 7.1 billion in spite of higher order count. The composition of orders underwent a shift in quarter three of FI24, with cash segment orders growing by nearly 20% to 74 million. In the middle of quarter two of FI24, we instituted a change in our tariff structure for the intraday cash segment where we now charge our clients 0.03% of the value of the order or rupees 20 per order, whichever is lower, as compared to our earlier structure of 0.25% or rupees 20 per order, whichever was lower. This change is the dominant reason for the decline in gross broking income for the quarter. 
Gross booking revenues account for 67% of our total gross revenues. Within this, FNO continues to drive our gross booking revenue, contributing 84% in quarter three of FI24, while the share of cash and commodity segments remains stable at 11% and 5% respectively. Since majority of our clients are part of our direct business unit, their share in, the, in our net broking revenues stood at approximately 76%, while the balance 24% was contributed by clients acquired through our assisted business unit. We are witnessing steady buildup of our long-term relationship with our clients. This is evident from the rising share of those clients who have been with us for more than two years. These cohorts accounted for 48% of the net broking revenue in quarter three of FI24, a significant increase from about 25% in quarter three of FI22. Through several efforts, advancements, and incremental product offerings across the super app platform, we are further strengthening the lifetime value proposition of these young clients. During the quarter, we witnessed significant improvement in the cash delivery segment. Higher activity in this segment is an important lever for our clients' funding book, which witnessed a robust growth of 32.1% sequentially to average at Rs. 18.6 billion for the quarter. This led to a corresponding growth in the interest we earned from this book. The interest earned on client funding along with the interest earned on deposits with exchanges led to a 17.2% sequential growth in our total interest income to rupees 2.1 billion, thus accounting for about 20% of the total gross revenues during the quarter. The ancillary transaction income linked to the turnover clients do on our platform stood at approximately 0.8 billion, accounting for nearly 8% of quarter 3 FI24 total gross revenues. Finance cost was higher by nearly 35% quarter on quarter to rupees 356 million in quarter 3 FI24 on account of higher average borrowings for the period in line with higher client funding book and higher margin requirements with the growth in business. Of the 400 million estimated increase in net finance cost due to the impact of higher borrowings for substituting the underlying collateral for bank guarantees with borrowed funds towards margins with the clearing corporation, pursuant to the SEBI circular, discontinuing any client funds as collateral for bank guarantees, we have incurred about Rs 160 million for the period between July to December 23 and estimate to incur, incur another 150 million in the ensuing quarter. This is due to the fact that most, <clears throat> most of the BGs with collateral as client funds matured by the end of September 2023 and the requirement for incremental borrowings went up after this. Employee benefit expenses, including cost of granting ESOPs, was at Rs 1.4 billion for the quarter, sequentially higher by 6.5%, due to the addition of headcount, primarily in the asset management business, data and analytics, technology, operations functions, and related hiring spends. Other OPEX for the quarter clocked over Rs 3.2 billion, being 21.7% higher sequentially, as we achieved our highest ever gross client acquisitions, leading to an increase in related one-time client acquisition and onboarding costs. Operating expenses were also higher on account of higher spends on tech infrastructure, DMAT charges in line with growth in business, and a quarterly incremental spend of Rs 25 million on CSR. Flat revenue coupled with aggressive client acquisition initiatives led to a decline in our consolidated operating margin to 44% for the quarter versus 51.3% in quarter two of FI24. This margin, however, remains in line with our guided range. This upfront one-time investment in acquiring more clients today will help us grow the business, uh, grow the business yield going forward, thus reaping the benefits of better operating leverage. 16.7% increase in depreciation and amortization costs at Rs 131 million in quarter three was on account of commissioning of some of our network infrastructure and other cost of our data centers and disaster recovery sites. Our consolidated profit after tax from continuing operations was lower by 14.5% quarter on quarter from Rs 3 billion 
to in quarter two of FY24 to over rupees 2.6 billion in quarter three FY24. For quarter three FY24, the board has approved distribution of about 40% of post-tax profits as third interim dividend to the shareholders, aggregating to rupees 1.07 billion and translating to rupees 12.7 per equity share. Our nine-month FY24 total gross revenues and profit after tax stood at nearly 29.2 billion and rupees 7.9 billion respectively, representing a growth of 33.4% and 26.1% over the corresponding period last year. Period end cash and cash equivalents increased to 90.6 billion on the back of increase in clients margins. Period end client funding grew to nearly 19.7 billion compared to rupees 11.5 billion as of March 23. Consolidated net worth of the company grew to 27.9 billion. As we continue to operate the business within our desired margin profile, our nine-month FY24 annualized return on average equity remains a healthy 42.3%. With this, I conclude the presentation and open the floor for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, kindly limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. We'll take the first question from the line of Swarnav Mukherjee from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sirs, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, I uh, I have uh, a few questions, but I'll uh, quickly ask a couple of uh, questions on the uh, you know the revenue side. So, if you could explain what uh, uh, made you to change the tariff structure in the intraday part, is it competition or is it something else? And uh, why ancillary revenue is down 10% uh, uh, despite you know overall volumes have gone up? Uh, and also, if you can uh, discuss a little bit in detail on uh, on the expenses side, particularly the uh, customer acquisition cost. So, what proportion of that will be uh, uh, part of our uh, you know overall other expenses line item, and uh, you know whether per customer acquisition costs have increased or is a similar level uh, to earlier and. Uh, how would how we expect the payback from these customers? Does, does the payback period remain six months or any kind of change in the metrics uh, that you are seeing? Um, so these are my two, three questions. I have other questions. If time permits, I'll ask them after your response. Yeah, excellent questions. Uh, see, on that tariff part, uh, as uh, repeatedly we have told that uh, we are actually market makers, right? We are, we are able to expand market. So we have to go into kind of a different geographies, different profile of customers and check what are the offering which will attract them to onboard in this industry. So time and again, we have been kind of like uh, coming out with lots of kind of like tariff structures and all that, uh, where we are able to attract new set of customers. But what guides us, what we look at is that, what is the cost of acquisition and what kind of a lifetime value we can derive from this set of customers. So that is the prime reason that we all the time being first uh, kind of like more in this market to acquire new profile of customers. We have to try out different, different ways to onboard this customer. But what we have seen, once a customer is onboarded, almost lifetime value is just that justifies cost of acquisition to the tune where we want to maintain an OPM of 50% and above. So we look at that. Second, on ancillary revenue and all that, I will ask you need to cover it later. Let me just complete on uh, your uh, the cost of equation and LTV side, although I have covered. So our cost of equation has not increased, first of all. Uh, as I said, that we go for different, different profiles. And every profile we try to map what is an LTV we achieve. If you look at all the profiles that we are acquiring customers from open market, our cost to LTV has remained steady. 
and we still maintain that break even of six months. Will it, is it then just answer on ancillary uh, revenue and expense side? Sir, uh, just a follow up on, uh, on your uh, uh, response on this uh, first question. Sir, so uh, uh, you have highlighted on the uh, lifetime value of the customers and the payback period. So, in terms of, you know, on the margin overall, like you have ca you have mentioned generally that uh, 45 to 50 percent OPM is your target range. But we, you have normally delivered better than that. Now, uh, should we consider that this particular quarter to be a relatively one-off quarter or uh, where the margins came to the lower end of the range? Or uh, should we think that now we are going ahead to be more aggressive? And that is why maybe over the next two, three quarters also our margins would start uh, playing out at the lower end of the range. If you could give some color on that. Yeah, yeah, sure. As I said, our uh, overall metrics, which is cost of equation to LTV has not changed. But what happens, like this quarter was full of seasons and all that. So when we take LTV of a customer, it is five years and beyond. So there will be few quarters where clients are not active because, as you know, Diwali, Christmas, New Year and all that, activity are a bit lower. And plus this quarter, if you see, we had three less working days. So overall, we don't see any impact on margin, but what will happen if you get an opportunity to acquire more customer, it's an upfronting cost. So it will impact, it will show a lower margin for that quarter. But if you extrapolate business model, that whole OPN has not changed. So there will be few quarters where you get more opportunity to acquire more customer. You will see that quarter, you may see OPN is less because of upfronting cost on acquiring customer, onboarding customer, expanding our technology capabilities and all that. So this quarter was more about investing in new set of customers. If you look at our customer base has grown almost by 16.5% quarter and quarter. That's a huge jump. There is a cost of acquiring a customer. And revenue is going to come in the next five, six years. So if I look at the metrics of cost of acquisition and LTV, it is almost like similar to what it was previous quarter. So Overall, I don't see that this impact on margin, what you're seeing in this quarter, is kind of permanent. It is something that we got an opportunity to acquire more customers. We acquired, we invested on expanding our kind of like uh, technology capabilities and all that. So there's a cost of uh, uh, cloud, there's a cost of onboarding a customer. So overall, I can tell you that our cost of equation and LT hasn't changed. So there is no impact on long-term uh, guidance that we say that we would like to remain in that zone of 45 to 50. But if we look at our cost to equation to lifetime value, what slide we show, it appears to be around in the range of 75, 80%. Slowly, you will see that, okay, this will play out once kind of like India reaches a level where there is not a huge kind of an opportunity to grow, but we are more trying to get more wallet share of a customer. That is where a true reflection of opium will be visible. But currently, as we are growing, as we see more opportunity to acquire customer, we may see impact in a quarter or two. And then again, if at all opportunity stabilizes, we we'll see we going back to the same OPM. Plus, we are investing in new businesses. So that new businesses will have impact in terms of we have to take upfront costs in the new businesses. But if I talk about broking, we have been maintaining uh, this kind of like cost to LTV. But new business addition that we are doing, Incremental investment that we will do is not going to impact margin in a big way. Understood, sir. Very helpful. Shandab, on, the, uh, on your question about ancillary income, so um, as we mentioned earlier, that there were uh, three less number of trading days in this quarter, and that is linked to the number of trading days. So primary impact of the decline is because of uh, the lesser number of trading days. Okay, sir, but uh, overall turnover, despite lesser number of trading days, would have increased, right? So this would be kind of the fees that you uh, pay to exchanges linked to the turnover. So that's yeah, what so I... Yeah. The, uh, as we also explained, the order mix has also undergone a bit of a change, where cash delivery orders were higher uh, as compared to the other segments. So it's a mix of number of trading days as well as the uh, change in the order mix. Sure, understood, sir. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you so much for the response. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of praise, Jen from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, hi. First of all, wish you everyone a very happy new year. Uh, and I have a few questions. Firstly, on the uh, pricing, price action again, you know, uh, is it fair to understand that you want the mix uh, of your brokerage business to slightly increase towards the cash segment? Uh, and because you also alluded to the fact that this price cutting or uh, realization cutting would help you grow your margin trade funding book as well. And so is there, is there a change in thought process where you want to uh, kind of increase the share of cash segment volumes? That would be my first question. Uh, second is, uh, uh, you know, on the, on the cost front again, while you alluded to there is no change, uh, in in the in the cost, uh, would would there be any other additional cost that would have gone up sequentially apart from client acquisition cost? Because that reflects in the uh, in in the increase in in the in the overall ad, uh, admin admin cost. And lastly, on whether you know with the RBI regulation changes, uh, what would be your approach on the uh, lending uh, on the uh, on the loan distribution business, and whether there is some uh, thought on uh, you know uh, could you give some insights into as to how would you approach this what could be the ticket sizes that you would be looking at or some some information so that we can understand this and just one small clarification does the SIP uh, uh, ETF SIP come into your client acquisition in any form that would be that would be my question thanks okay uh, let me let us go one by one. Uh, one on this mix, uh, uh, see, uh, we always said that we want to be having a market share in all the segments. So you are right in terms of when it comes to market share in cash segment, margin trading, everywhere we are looking up to be confident in a leadership position. So wherever you find a pocket, uh, like uh, there are clients who want to start their journey uh, by cash segment, we are equally kind of like uh, eager to acquire them and uh, try to nurture them on our platform. As I said, what we have realized, even we, when we take a customer for care segment, a uh, lifetime value of this customer is almost quite uh, decent in terms of unit wise economy. So it surpasses like, or uh, maybe passes that concern like test of OPM of 50% and around. Mm -hmm. So yes, when we are looking at the new geographies, we know lots of customers, they don't want to start uh, activity, which is very intense high. They want to start a building portfolio. They want to buy a cash segment. They want to make a portfolio. So we are very keen to get a market share over there. And that does not impact our cost of acquisition to LTV metrics. <clears throat> Second, when we come on expenses, yes, this quarter, uh, one cost uh, was because of higher uh, like uh, acquisition that we did. And plus, 